Hey, Archery Talk, this is Lucas, and today I'm having a chance to sit down, at least virtually, with Evan Williams from Hoyt Archery, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the 2022 Hoyt Archery lineup, and also help me decide what would be the best bow for me to test this year as part of Archery Talk's 2022 hunting bow lineup. Evan, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure, Lucas. How are we doing today? I'm doing great so far. It's uh, it's winter. It's cold up here in Canada, but uh, beyond that, I'm having a good time. There you go. So I guess we have first things first, I guess, what is, what's different for 2022? What's, so how, how, how are the RX-7s different from the RX-5s? How is the Ventum Pro different from the Ventum? I guess let's dig into that a little bit. No, absolutely. Yeah. So starting on, on the carbon side, um, RX-7 versus the RX-5, complete redesign of the riser. Um, so in years past, we've had the carbon frame. We've had a, an aluminum head that is glued onto that carbon frame that allows us to attach our limb pockets, limbs cam system. Um, and for this year, we're able to completely get rid of those aluminum heads and we have a 100% carbon construction riser. Um, so what that did is that allowed us to eliminate half a pound of mass weight out of those bows. So extremely lighter. We got back to 3.9 pounds on the RX-7. The RX-7 Ultra is at 4.3 pounds um, and that's a 34 axle axle still where our rx7 is a 30 inch axle axle um, so brought those mass weights way down in doing so we now had to shift where we were putting our sl sidebar and our two-piece mounting hardware system as well as our lower shock pod mounting system so in our testing what we found is that by taking our shock pod system from on the bottom on both sides to both on it would be the shelf side of the bow so if you are a right-handed archer they're on the left side of the bow and putting one on the bottom and one on the top it does a couple things one it increases the balance when you have sight rest and especially that quiver that stands off a little bit but two you are killing noise and vibration directly at its source up towards the head of the limb pocket where you have a steel bolt going into an aluminum dowel. So what we did on our dowel is we drilled and tapped into the sides of that limb pocket dowel. And now we mount that shock pod directly to that aluminum limb dowel. And on the carbons, we cut down 26% more noise and vibration on the RX-7s over the RX-5s. The, again, I found the RX-5 was already probably the quietest carbon bow I've shot. I had mm -hmm. the Ultra, I shot the Ultra all, all last year and really enjoyed that bow. So I'm interested, interested to, to do a little head-to-head -head comparison as far as like vibration feeling. That's, uh, it's, I'm surprised you're able to drop that much, uh, that much noise and vibration. Yep. And going to an all-carbon riser, that helped um, just because of the natural properties of carbon when it comes to vibration reduction. Um, but then really shifting that shock pod system with that bigger bullet weight up into that limb pocket really helped cancel that down the other big shift we still have the binary cam system it's still in the hbx family but the pro cam we've redesigned the hub location uh, so the hub location is basically where your bearings connect to that cam and what we did is we actually shifted that slightly that allowed us to get a better center shot so what we were finding on the 2021 bows is that visually the center shot was pushed out for a right-handed archer to the left more than a lot of people were liking because there was tuning right around that 15 16 range, which if you take your string and you go right down the middle of the grip, it points off to the left. But that's where we had designed the geometry of that riser to sit. So visually, with the redesign of the hub on the HBX Pro system, it brings that arrow position back more into line with what a user or a guy in a pro shop is going to use as a reference for center shot. Because, I mean, let's be honest, how many guys are going to sit out there and measure their center shot? It's all going to be on eyeball. And then once they go to paper or walk back tuning or broadhead tuning, then it's just going to be an adjustment and you never actually physically measure it. Yeah, again, I've always gone the route of of running like an arrow pressed against the riser and then having the arrow on the rest and making sure they're parallel. And that's my starting point. And then we'll go, we'll tweak, tweak a little bit from there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so 
with that carbon riser and again moving the positions of all the mounting areas for the shock pods the sl sidebar mount and the two-piece system we actually lowered the center of gravity by pulling the lower bracket that allows you to mount your two-piece quiver and your sl sidebar farther down under that grip so anytime you can get your mass weight lower under the grip closer to that limb the potential you need for less total mass weight to achieve a better balance so a little bit better system and again it's it's all about the end user experience and it's all about how the pieces fit together to complete an entire system so the other aspect of that is both the rx7s and the ventum pros have built in picatinny systems so last year you had to pull your mounting hardware off on the rx5s put a new bracket plate on if you wanted to run the picatinny system what happened when you did that is you could now no longer run a sight mount style quiver you had to run a two-piece because you lost your mounting position on the ventums from 2021 you had a little pick bracket that you had to if you wanted to mount additionally in the front of that bow with two set screws this year it's all built in as well as your standard position mount for sights and quivers so now you have the option especially on the carbons you can run a pick sight and depending on what quiver you're running you have the option to run any style quiver as if it were mounting to your site because we still have those mounting position holes even with the pick system so it becomes a much more universal much more user friendly if you want to run a non-pick site you can do that and have it there or if you want to play with one um, if you've got a buddy that loans you one or you want to go find the fuse um, we've got our our pick system you can throw that on there and still have your standard quiver to mount yeah, sim simplifies the process yep yep sure does then when it comes to balance our new super light quiver designs have a new standoff bracket and what we did on that is all of our quivers both the two-piece and the removable systems have the same standoff bracket where in years past the two-piece had fixed position brackets that mounted and you were coming in from this end and you would had no option as far as how far off they were going to be the quick disconnect was the same style where you would mount to your riser and had a fixed position with your quick disconnect adapter on the end so you're coming in from the back side well now with the new system you mount it to your riser and you have a set screw that allows multi-point adjustments for your quiver position so this is a two-piece it's got a set screw knob position here that locks into a trough i don't know if you can see that in the video or not lucas um, but it's got little indentions and depending on what side I run, what rest I run, if I'm not using an inline Picatinny or um, like the integrate system from QAD, if it stands off, I can now adjust in eighth inch increments where I want that quiver to be so I can keep everything physically as tight to the bow as possible. So with my system, I can physically get on a 33 Ventum Pro or an Ultra because of my arrow length i can take my quiver to where i'm physically sitting inside of my limbs it's that tight and when you do that you don't need a side stabilizer because everything is in line and so close to the bow that the balance isn't an option or it's a it's not an issue so so, so the, not only is the bow itself lighter with the new setup but you might have to not carry a side stab and further reducing weight as well Yep. Yep. So you're reducing the weight and the overall mass weight of the bow. You're bringing all of your accessories in line and our two piece. I want to say our two piece four arrow quiver is just a touch over five ounces. That's half the weight of a tight spot quiver. So extremely lightweight. If that allows you to reduce a sidebar if you don't need it you drop the weight there so you're getting a complete bow ready to go for a whitetail hunt 
your mule deer, your antelope, your elk, hitting the mountains, your trailhead, wherever you're getting ready to go. And you're talking a bow that's sub seven pounds, fully loaded, ready to hit the trail. Again, depend on accessories. Um, I put one together that was like 6.4 ounces loaded with arrows, ready to go. Interesting. I'd be, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with the system. That's a lot of fun. It sounds like a, an interesting setup, uh, yeah. especially for those, those of you guys who have to really do a, a lot of hiking and moving around with your bow when you're hunting. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, where I am, it's more, a lot of tree stand stuff is a little less important, but I can, you know, those, those elk hunters out west who are, or mule deer hunters out west who are, who are walking miles a day will appreciate, I'm sure, that uh, a little bit less weight to carry on your back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I guess the, the last year at this time, we did a little thing called the What Should I Shoot? Yep. Um, we talked about which kind of which bow would be best for, for me to, to maybe test this year. So I figured let's uh, let's put that in your capable hands again. Um, you know, my, my usual measurements are 30 inches of draw length. I usually shoot, you know, uh, I'll usually shoot 70, 70 pound limbs, probably back down to about 66, 67 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's my basic setup. So, uh, what do you think is the, the best way for me to, to test this year? Yep. So I'm a straight up numbers guy. Um, I like to look at where module breaks are in our cam systems. Um, and with your draw length, I'm still going to recommend that that rx7 ultra simply because that puts you in the top position of that number two mod you're going to get the 34 axle axle with a seven inch brace height it's going to be extremely forgiving and extremely comfortable with your head position that being said the average guy for bow hunting is that 28 and a half to 29 range so if you're really looking for maximizing your performance you really want to go and dive into where the module breaks are on each of those models. So the Ventum Pro 30 and the RX-7, that number two mod is going to range from 25 to 28 inches. So if you're a 28 inch draw length or under, I'm going to recommend either the RX-7 or the Ventum Pro 30. The reason for that is the farther towards the top of that number two module you can stay or to the top of that number three when we get there the higher in that position you can be the better efficiency you're going to have for the usage of that cam for energy and speed so if you're a 28 or under stay short our axle to axle when you start getting that 28 and a half 29 it's really going to be an increased benefit to look at the ventum pro 33 that 33 axle axle allows us to shift that draw length range by an inch. So that number two mod will now cover 26 to 29. So that 28 and a half, 29 is going to be your optimized position for speed and energy use for efficiency. Then we jump back to the RX-7 Ultra when we go 29 and a half and 30, because going again, another extra inch in that axle axle length, we shift that draw length range to 27 to 30 in the number two cam. Once you break 30, again, staying longer axle to axle, your 30 and a half and your 31 are now peak performance draw lengths in the number three module, but it's on the Ventum Pro 33. Once you go 31 and a half and 32, that's where the RX-7 Ultra puts you in the peak performance of that number three mod. So your module breakdowns, RX-7 and the Ventum Pro 30, the number two mod will range 25 to 28 inches. The number three mod will cover 28 and a half to 30. So if you are a longer draw length archer, but you like a short axle axle, those would definitely be a route to go. I like a little bit better string angle, a little bit longer bow. So I prefer once I get longer in that draw length to go to a longer overall axle to axle. Um, I don't feel like it's ever hindered me in tree stands, ground blinds, spotting and stocking. And it allows me that if I'm shooting 3Ds in the summer, if I'm shooting some winter indoor leagues with the buddies or just out having a good time, I get better head position, I shoot longer, I'm more comfortable with that 33, 34 length from the Ventum Pro 33 and the 34 on the Ultra. The Ventum Pro 33 
Number two module will start at 26 inches and will go to 29. The number three is going to cover 29 and a half to 31. And then the RX-7 Ultra, the number two mod is 27 to 30 inches. And the number three is going to be 30 and a half to 32. So being able to cover 25 to 32 in four different models and having a lot of options for guys to be able to play around with is a huge benefit. Yeah, so. I was, I, I was, I was a little skeptical of people chasing. Oh, I want to be, at the, I want to be at the top drawing for my specific mod. I wasn't sure what it meant. And then last year, I kind of learned um, because we we shot the RX five Ultra last year, mm -hmm. and I had the I was I, I had the the top the top mod in that in that camera, the thirty inch mod, and um, and I ended up that bow had, was was as far as like rated speed goes was. 10 feet, 12 feet per second slower than some of the bows I was testing, ended up being tied for first in my speed shootout because I had it perfectly, mm -hmm. you know, I, had, I had the most out of that cam I could possibly get out of that cam. So I was like, yeah. that, for uh, someone who was not, you know, I wouldn't say, say I was a non-believer, I just wasn't understanding it. And then that last year really helped me understand how, how important it is if you're looking to get, you know, more efficiency and maybe a little speed more than you would expect because that bow was, you know, it was, it was the slowest one rated in the shootout and tied for first in the actual testing. Yep. And being able to break those mods down where the HBX cam system, it doesn't matter which bow it's on, the HBX cam system covers five full inches of draw length range. If you cover five inches and you only have one module, as you come off of that, that peak testing draw length range for whatever manufacturer that is, you start losing efficiency in the cam, you start losing let off, and you start losing performance very, very quickly because it's such a broad range trying to cover with one cam and one rotating module. When you can take that and break it down into two mod subsets, you can now increase and play with that performance. The trade-off, when you're in the top side to get that speed in the performance, you've got a little bit longer draw force peak in your curve. So you're going to have that peak weight just a little bit longer, but it's still exceptionally smooth. And you're going to be holding a little bit more weight on the back end because it's a little more aggressive because again, we're still stopping a five inch draw length range cam sooner than it was designed in, in its prime. So it's a little bit more aggressive to get those speeds, but the trade-off and the benefit to me on the back end is much outweighed over that. Like I would rather have a little bit more holding weight and that more aggressive cam because I have a very aggressive shot. So I pull very hard into the wall. If you have a softer shot where you like to kind of sit there and relax and float more on the back end where you don't have a lot of tension built into your back pulling, you might look at, okay, I'm right on the edge where if I'm 20 and a half, I can go into that that Venton Pro 33 and have that better performance. But my shot style, I should probably look at maybe the short axle axle and still get good string angle. Or if it's in the budget going up to the RX-7 where I'm still in the number two module, but I'm on the shorter end of that. So I'm allowing myself a smoother draw cycle and a less aggressive cam off the back because i'm not on the top of that cam but more in that middle to bottom end range so again not only going into the customizable features for each archer but going into how you physically shoot your shot and being able to pick that bow model based on the feel that you want off the cam itself I appreciate the insight because that, that's stuff. Again, I, I, you hear people talk, you don't necessarily know what it means. And that's a good description. I maybe for anybody looking for any bow on what it means to be in which position of the cam or which position of the module. I got one more thing, one more question, I guess, before we go is that uh, again, this uh, this year, people may have noticed you went from the RX5 in 2021 to the RX7 in 2022. Mm -hmm. What happened to the RX6? <laughs> well, how do you have an RX6 when you have a whole brand new riser and a new cam system? And that's, and that's the big thing, you, you know, we didn't do an RX2, so we went from the RX1 to the RX3, same this year where we went from the 5 to the 7. Our carbon risers live in cycles, and so when we made that cycle jump from the RX1 riser to the RX3 riser, 
there were so many performance benefits that it didn't make sense to do a one generation shift. Same here. We went lighter. We went 26% reduction in noise and vibration with a better tuning bow. It doesn't make sense to do a one generational shift. There's such a leap in the technology between what the five gave us from a performance standpoint to where the seven is putting us that we want to create a deeper separation between those two models because of what it gave us. Evan, that's great. I do appreciate your time today. No, it's absolutely a pleasure, Lucas. Always fun talking with you. Thanks so much. Yep, absolutely, buddy.